Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today uh, and welcome to your CICM Credit and Collections Essentials Guide for 2024. Uh, this webinar uh, broadcast uh, is being recorded and it will be available uh, in our resources section uh, and slides will also be shared post the event. Um, to mention what we're going to be covering um, today in some more detail. Um, but uh, before I get, get to that, uh, I want to say uh, thank you very much for allowing us to uh, hijack some of your uh, lunch times. Uh, I think this is uh, absolutely showing uh, your commitment to your profession. Um, and no doubt there'll be uh, half eaten sandwiches and half drunk coffees littering hundreds of desks up and down the country uh, whilst you're enjoying this session. Uh, introductions, uh, I'm Luke Stolfort, part of the senior leadership team here at CICM. Uh, I'm running uh, the corporate um, development partnership programs. I am delighted to be joined uh, by my colleagues and CICM uh, subject matter experts across our learning and development operation, uh, Jules Ames. Uh, Jules heads up Hi. our vocational uh, workshop training delivery. Um, Jules also designs and uh, is writing content as well as expertly facilitating on those workshops. Um, also, we have Mary Delahunte. Hello, Mary. Uh, Mary is heading up our qualifications um, and apprenticeships uh, delivery. Um, and Mary is a highly experienced uh, teacher uh, who tutors on our credit and collections qualification pathways. Uh, so, yes, what are we going to be... Uh, covering today. Um, so a number of points here. Um, firstly, uh, we will be exploring uh, essential skills um, that uh, credit professionals need to really thrive in 2024. Um, in a rapidly uh, changing uh, financial environment, uh, adaptability and technical prowess, as well as uh, data analytics skills uh, are becoming increasingly indispensable. Um, so uh, embracing continuous learning uh, to stay abreast of industry advancements is really key. We're also going to be focusing on um, setting personal development goals. Goals um, we, we feel that's uh, paramount in navigating your professional journey. Um, in 2024, um, tailor your goals to align with the dynamic needs of the credit industry. Um, leveraging resources that foster skill enhancement, um, such as vocational workshops, qualifications, bite-sized CPD, and mentorship programs. Um, we're also going to look at um, how to retain your staff in 2024. Um, so staff retention um, really is a pressing concern for um, many organizations. Um, so to retain your top talent in 2024, uh, we need to be looking at investing in uh, professional growth opportunities. Uh, we also need to be uh, recognizing and celebrating achievements from the camp, um, fostering uh, really a, a positive work culture that inspires loyalty and commitment. And to conclude, we're going to be then looking um, at uh, how organizations are preparing for 2024. Um, so Key one here is to uh, evidence strategic foresight. Um, businesses are investing in cutting edge technologies, refining uh, their risk management strategies um, and embracing sustainable practices. Uh, they're also staying attuned to industry trends and actively contributing um, to their organization's readiness for the challenges ahead. Um, top tips from our Q accredited firms um, we've got some 54 accredited firms um, currently. Um, that's going to conclude. Um, so where we're gleaning um, insights from those organizations, um, their proven track record uh, really offers valuable tips uh, for success in 2024. And what they're doing is they're prioritizing collaboration, um, they're employing best practices in credit management, and they're leveraging technology to streamline processes. Um, so that's over to, to Jules. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, obviously, we're focusing very much on what we've learned in 2023. 
Um, and based on that, what essential skills we feel as a, an institute uh, we need in our credit community for 2024. And we split this into three different areas. So the first area of uh, skill we're going to talk about in our webinar today is our technical skills. Um, so these are going to be broken down to three main areas um, that are going to be paramount to us in 2024. So uh, in quarter one, 24, uh, it's predicted again to see another spike in insolvencies. Now that's both in the UK and abroad. Um, and the repercussions, um, of course, will need technical know-how to handle beyond that first quarter. So really law and insolvency um, is an essential skill that we need to be uh, diving a little deeper into in uh, the coming year. Uh, certainly with regards to insolvency, um, there are um, situations where uh, organisations, for one reason or another, uh, are struggling to have the... Um, the skill set within their within their organisations or certainly within their credit and collections departments to get the best out of insolvency. It's almost like, well, once it's hit um, their desk as an IVA or there's an administration, it's kind of, well, right off and we're done. So um, certainly um, from CICM's point of view, it's about boosting those skills, uh, certainly in handling the uh, insolvency process so that we can recover what we can out of that. Uh, similarly with law, of course, um, there's always uh, new laws that we have to consider. Uh, the very key one, particularly if you're in the consumer market, um, is the consumer duty. Um, so we have to uh, make sure that we've got good application of consumer duty. That's going to be a prime skill for those in that market, especially when it comes to vulnerability. So the idea of vulnerability has been around for um, a long time, as long as the FCA really has taken over. Uh, but it's becoming even more in focus with this new consumer duty. So it's building that um, understanding of not ticking a box when it comes to vulnerability. What we've also found is that a lot of organisations, whether they deal with um, individual consumers or not, are adopting a lot of the principles of vulnerability because ultimately um, everything encapsulated in that consumer duty about how we can support our um, end customer works just as well business to business. So if we've got a small organisation, a sole trader in our portfolio, the consumer duty works well with that and they will also have vulnerabilities that we can handle but also even larger businesses you've still got individuals that we are dealing with anyone that collects cash will know that people pay people uh, people bond with people so actually all of the things in consumer duty that help build the relationship with an individual it works in business and business business to business as well so yet consumers consumer duty another big technical skill uh, to work on the key to that is not to just read all the pamphlets and see it in theory, it's how to take that and apply it in the business environment. What are we physically doing in our departments that um, not just complies with duty, but adopts the principles of it. Uh, last one in technical skills um, is the financial analysis. So um, of our top three of technical skills, really it's that ability to analyze finances, interpret their effect on the credit product so that's going to be critical um, not only in assessing risk at take on but staying you know really on it and acutely aware of what the risk weighting is at any point in the ledger or in the customer journey again we've found that um, a lot of organizations quite rightly are using a lot of automation to assist in their uh, credit vetting um, some reliance of course on credit bureaus credit reference agencies and their recommendations but what is fading out in some organisations is having that person able to interpret the figures that are in there. And we see that across the board uh, in every single industry. So this ability that, of course, we're going to use the, the tools, the automation, the reports from third parties that are out there. But if we see something that conflicts with what our organisation wants in their risk appetite, what can we do about that? How can we justify our recommendations and substantiate our our reports. The only way we can do that is to really understand the figures behind those reports. Um, so we feel an essential skill this year will be boosting that ability to read company accounts, to understand financial analysis. It even goes into the consumer market, of course, making sure that um, we are aware of how we handle the standard financial statement, income and expenditure for consumers and how we can help them to analyse and budget better. So that's our technical skills that we have. Um, feel free, by the way, throughout this, um, 
to pop things into the chat box if they've got particular questions or comments or your observations of some of these skills and how you think um, we can all help as an industry uh, with boosting their skills. Um, our second set are interpersonal skills, um, sometimes called soft skills. I'm not a big fan of the, um, of the phrase. There's nothing soft about some of the conversations that we have to have. So coupled with the technical skill top three, uh, we've got three top interpersonal skills for 2024. Now we know a good credit and collections professional will already have those core interpersonal skills. So in your arsenal, you'll order, already have active listening, questioning, showing empathy. All of those things should already be there in our organisations. But of course, with AI covering a lot of the more straightforward situations, um, humans, us, we need to offer something beyond the scripted answer to a frequently asked question, for instance. So this is where emotional intelligence comes in. Now, this is a real skill that takes time to develop, um, but it needs to be actively practised. So if the um, credit professional at whatever level is going to be able to show that emotional maturity and resilience, because there are some all very difficult conversations we often have to have, um, then they need to be able to um, harness that, in, that, that EQ, that emotional quotient. Second in the personal scale, crucial, is negotiation. And of course, negotiation in the modern world is a far cry from certainly negotiation when I started in credit and collections, uh, which was a bit more of coercion um, or this back and forth um, negotiation where someone starts high, someone starts low, and then you think you've compromised by meeting in middle. And in, in actual fact, when you meet in the middle, no one's really happy because neither side actually got what they wanted. So this idea of modern day negotiation and a lot of organizations have people that they, they can get the cash in. They can they can get the the um the onboarding over the line. But are they up to date with this modern approach to negotiation, which does a lot more for the customer's um, satisfaction? So this idea of creating collaborative wins uh, that support both the business and the customer is a highly technical skill and it's def definitely worth worth honing. Last one in interpersonal skills then is adaptability. Um, so this means um, not only adapting to a conversation while it's evolving, because that's a skill in itself, being able to be um, dynamic enough to and flexible enough to change, uh, but also adapting um, the form of communication at a, a wider level. So um, it's been observed that a lot of credit, particularly collections teams, hide behind the email or customers avoid the phone calls. So maybe it's time to think about adapting our communication. Is it time to step into new methods of communication? If we're going to start using methods such as this environment here, you know, using our, um, our Zoom, our Teams to link in with our customers, this is a different skill set because now you're communicating and using this, <laughs> you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, non-verbal communication that perhaps we haven't harnessed and certainly our teams have not harnessed before uh, so maybe time to step into these new methods of communication look at this from a, a credit policy point of view but also building those skills to make them effective all right I promise this is the last bit before I move on to somebody else um, uh, the third set of skills um, are going to be our strategic skills because um, it's not going to be enough to do uh, what we've always done and then expect to be successful in 2024. So at a higher level, the function needs to set strategies uh, that ensure the business and the credit and collections area are successful and they are future-proofed. So that means learning um, agile working practices. I think Luke mentioned this at the start, actually. Uh, this is going to allow us to identify changes before they arrive. Um, so we can take automation um, as an example and how actually the credit and collections role is already evolving in response to that because a lot of automation started a decade ago and a lot of credit and collections departments are moving to take advantage of that uh, but there are others that are still working the process they've always worked because that's the way they've always worked it so it's been able to be flexible enough to see the change as a positive um, adopt those um, changes uh, make sure you've got a team that have that flexibility to be able to do it uh, and then filling in those new skills that, that will be created. 
Um, so yeah, it's making sure processes as well as people, of course, need to be agile and adaptable and skilled at handling that involved role uh, and future proofing your resource. So that means, for example, securing the right hardware, uh, right software um, and all the supporting products. But it also means having things like having the right teams in place uh, with the right set of skills. Um, and these include more collaborative skills uh, that allow the department and those who work in it um, to align their approaches uh, to the overall strategy of the business. Uh, so that's kind of the last point, really, the fact that it takes skill again at um, a managerial level, certainly, because it has to start from the top down to create that cohesion, that collaboration, uh, but then allow that skill to disseminate into the department so that it becomes a cultural way of working in collaboration in that way. So making sure the, build, the business has got workable, tangible targets for the team and that they can uh, work in unison to, to meet the overall goals. Uh, so they're, they're kind of my um, top three of those three sections on essential skills. But again, happy for anyone. If they've got questions, pop them in chat. I know that um, they will be taken towards the end. We, know, we look over the next couple of slides about how we can consider all of those things that we need and our teams need and how we can set personal development goals that will really work for us. Um, so we're going to look at this in terms of a, a stepped approach, really. But a strong personal development plan can really help to firstly uncover your current strengths and skills, but also identify areas for improvement. And then, of course, we need a plan to put into place to make sure that we achieve those objectives. So step one is self-assessment. We need to complete a really honest appraisal of where are we at now, really, because that will help us to know what the plan needs to look like. So if you're already a CICM member, the best way to perhaps start this is to undertake the CICM professional skills audit. Um, many of you may have already done this, but we recommend doing this on an annual basis because it's really good to see where were you last year and where are you now? Because the whole we're, we're constantly looking at what new skills can we hone in on and develop. Um, so by doing that, you will naturally end up with personal career development recommendations that come out of doing that audit. You'll find the professional skills audit um, probably linked into these slides, actually, but also it's in the members only area of the, uh, the website. Step two is then thinking about what your personal objectives need to be. So once you've identified where are you at now and, and where is it that you want to develop your skills over the coming year, we need to then think about objectives. And it's not just about the coming year, actually. We recommend that you look at short, medium and long term goals, um, but that they should all align to your overall objectives. So often, if you've got one or two main long term objectives that might be three years plus, then you can break those down into more short and medium term objectives to help to support that over overall long term aim. For example, you might intend to become CICM qualified and that's your long term aim. So the more immediate objectives is going to be sourcing the right information on the relevant qualifications, how you can get started, making sure that you become a CICM member and then obviously starting to study towards them. With your long term objective, if it's career related, perhaps that might be to move into a supervisory or, or management role within maybe three years, then your more immediate objectives would include going on some sort of relevant training courses and possibly gaining some leadership experience to help you get there. Step three is about setting your goals. Once you've defined your objectives, you need a plan to be put in place. Now we've got a professional development plan uh, as part of um, our resources for members, which helps you to break down your objectives into manageable pieces. Having a plan is a really proven way of helping you to achieve them. And our PDP is by nature um, designed to be smart, so specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and realistic and time bound for each objective in each line that you um, identify to help you work towards the overall objectives. And this will allow you to think about what it is that you want to achieve, how you're going to achieve it and what resources you might need to do that and when you're going to complete it by. Step four of the plan needs to be to revisit it regularly. The PDP needs to be a really evolving document that needs to change and flex with you 
as you achieve your goals or even recognizing things that get in the way of you achieving them and then you have to reset them by looking at this um, development plan regularly and updating it with your ongoing successes you're building continuous improvement into that plan I wouldn't think of it as a document that you fill in and then sort of leave it needs to be um, really organic and you need to be revisiting it regularly to assess your progress if we move on to the next slide you'll see that uh, you will be able to download the template that we've got so we'll make sure that you can do that afterwards in terms of um, how we retain staff which was one of the things we wanted to talk about as part of this presentation we've got some source material here some statistics from various sources which i think demonstrate just how important it is to invest in our teams um, linkedin 86 percent of i struggle to say this word millennials didn't do it very well people of a certain age would not leave their current position if training and development was offered by their employer that's a really really high stat uh, shift learning e-learning says 40 percent of employees who don't receive the necessary job training to become effective are likely to leave their positions within the first year that one really jumped out at me because we all know that it costs a lot of money to firstly attract new talent into the business and then the time and investment spent in getting them just hitting the ground to then see them go a year later is um, particularly difficult. Um, so it, it clearly shows that investment in teams work, which brings me nicely on to the next slide where we'll look at qualifications, which could be very much part of that plan for development. So CICM have a range of qualification co courses that go from our entry level two all the way through to degree level five. Um, it covers a wide range of credit collections and enforcement and debt advice subjects. So we offer something to the whole industry uh, based on your particular sector, but also where you're at in your career. So we do have something for all. We offer various supported methods. So you could do classroom learning with us, which is live classes, or if that doesn't work, we've got supported home study options as well. Or some people do also study independently. Once successful candidates gain their recognized accredited qualifications, and the, it is worth saying that these are off qual accredited qualifications, so they really are robust and have a high degree of recognition in industry. Not only will you have that qualification, but you'll also um, be able to use that towards your um, professional membership. So achievement of our level three means that you'll be upgraded to an associate level member with us so you can use the letters ACICM and those that go on to do level five will be our um, graduate members so you can use MCICM uh, grad after your name you are entitled to those letters whilst you remain in current membership so it is one of the core benefits of membership we also have apprenticeship routes it's worth uh, reminding people that as well as studying directly with ourselves our level two certificate and also a full level three diploma in credit and collections can be achieved under an apprenticeship um, we work with main lead, lead training providers in order to do that so CICM's role is as a uh, subcontractor we do the technical delivery towards that and you would work with a main training provider but that of course is a funded option so it is uh, it is really worthwhile remembering people that that is is something that you can consider. Thank you, Mary. So it's back to me uh, to talk about training. So I'm not here, even though they are is they are the gold standard training. I mean, I'm not going to pretend that they're not, uh, but I'm not here to say, right, buy our training packages. It's not really um, a sales pitch. This it's more about a lot of people. Of course, our website, our new website, much easier to navigate and you can see very quickly. But we have so much training and we deliver it in so many different ways uh, in our portfolio that sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees. So this is just an opportunity, really, for those that are on the um, on the webinar, particularly those that are on live that aren't listening to it recorded. You can say, OK, well, have you got this? Will it work like this? Um, so it's to give you a rough idea of what we do in our training arm so there'll be people that absolutely want to commit to the qualification route of course that is um a, a very robust um way of securing and skyrocketing your career myself and mary and indeed luke we can all uh, verify that that definitely works 
Um, but there'll be opportunities as well where you want more um, bespoke training, something that's very specific to a practical fundamental thing you do in the department or that your team does. It might be that you are moving into, like Mary said in her um, section on personal development, you might go, actually, I'm thinking of moving into a managerial role. Let's get some training that's specifically about leadership skills. Um, so the idea of your training is that you can tailor it very specifically to where you are or where you want to be in your career. Um, so the way um, that we can deliver training for you, um, we can do face to face. So face to face is um, we can literally turn up if you've got a group of you in your organization that want to train uh, very popular ones in in the two extremes. Funnily enough, uh, one of them was one of our essential skills for 24, which is risk assessment. So we do a lot of in-house um, face to face training to look at um, how you um, uh, manage risk assessment, how you vet customers, how you can make sure you're aware of the overall risk appetite of your business and work within it. So we have face to face sessions that do that. Uh, also, another really popular face to face one is uh, our suite of collections. We've got five different collections programs, uh, depending on where you are in your journey and what you want out of it. Uh, we also have virtual platform, which is this. Uh, we do a lot of virtual training uh, and it's highly interactive. Um, so you don't just sit there like you're doing today <laughs> and listening quietly and adding some questions. Um, it's much more interactive than that. So you um, often break out into breakout rooms to um, brainstorm ideas. And we use the chat an awful lot to um, formulate our ideas. Uh, we do polls, questions, that sort of thing. So lots of virtual platform work. It is by far our most popular method of training uh, because, of course, a couple of hours, extended lunch, and you've got your training in. Uh, for that month. So it's a really popular way of doing it. Um, also, we've got on-demand pre-recorded training. So if you say, actually, I'm the sort of person that quite likes to work through it all by myself, don't really want to be sitting in a group of people. I just want to just do it by myself. Perfect. We have on-demand trainings. They run about 25, 30 minutes long. Um, but again, very interactive, even though it's recorded. So what you do is you go through it, you pause it when it tells you to pause and complete an exercise, and then it tells you how you got on. Uh, so there are different methods of delivery. So pick the method that suits you, that suits your environment, that suits your team. Uh, run times, it says, ranges from 25 minutes for those pre-recorded. Uh, then we can do multi-day courses. Uh, and actually the ones that are most successful uh, are the ones where we have a staged approach. So it could be that suite of collections where we start with our making sure we've got our fundamentals right and everyone's at the same level. Uh, and then we give uh, a, a, a pre-agreed period of time to digest, check the return on investment, move to the next one. Um, gold standard training, as I say, so all the trainers that we use are qualified trainers and experienced in the subject. So not only are they qualified as in they know how to teach and train, um, but also they've been there, done that, and got the t-shirt. So our trainers will be, if you want to do a legal recoveries training, we have a solicitor that specialises in um, in uh, creditor uh, debt. So he will he will run that. Um, we've got our very own Mary Delahunty that does an amazing multi-day uh, risk assessment um, <laughs> because she knows the accounting side of it. So if you look through a, um, a balance sheet, profit and loss account, she'll help you to see how you can pick that apart and understand it from a risk and credit perspective. So all of them experienced in the subject. And we have, um, as it says, practical training that covers every part of the customer journey and our order to cash cycle. So everything from pre-onboarding through the whole customer journey, a lot of customer relationship um, uh, training, right through to the more technical, highly skilled ones. So if you if you want training on something when you've got protracted um, arrears, you've got collection that you can't collect, you've got debt recovery, maybe you want to do that through the court or find another method. Um, then all of that is in there. Um, and as I say, sometimes you can't, you don't know where to start, uh, but just spending a little time on the uh, the website, you'll see um, all of our order to cash is broken down from risk assessment through to recoveries. And if you click on that, it has a drop down for all the things. If there's anything in that training portfolio you can't see, uh, then get in touch with us. It's highly likely that with our um, our core group of approved trainers, we will have something. So if you're saying, well, I'm in export, that's fine. We have an amazing letters of credit training course for you. So if you don't immediately see it, come and talk to us about it. And of course, because we are part of this wonderful CSM community, 
Um, we're able to um, draw on experience from so many of our members. Uh, so it means that if you've got something specific to your uh, industry, for instance, then we can make sure it's tailored to the, the industry and the customer base you have. Okay, that, that's my spiel over. So focusing on uh, preparation uh, and how others are preparing uh, for 2024. We've um, done a bit of surveying of our CRCMQ accredited firms, uh, and we've got some statements. So I just want to shine a bit of a light on uh, these. Uh, so firstly, uh, one that's really showing a prevailing theme uh, among the Q uh, accredited firms um, is the emphasis on collaboration. Uh, so these organizations are actively working in tandem uh, with sales and business development acquisition teams um, to really identify areas of growth um, by aligning credit strategies and business objectives. These firms are not only um, supporting growth initiatives, but also proactively mitigating risks uh, and effective collection strategies um, are being carved out um, to really strike that delicate balance um, that we see um, whereby uh, we're creating a balance uh, and they're creating a balance between uh, nurturing those customer relationships and, and safeguarding against potential credit risks along the way. Uh, the next focus um, and, and commentary is, is about cost base, um, so managing that. Um, so common thread running through uh, the theme, the, the, the firms, um, whereby they're uh, approaching a um, uh, focus on uh, managing costs is quite meticulous. Um, so closely monitoring uh, the cost base while keeping a finger on the pulse of customer relationships is paramount. Uh, simplifying processes and leveraging automation where possible um, is a strategic move um, to enhance operational efficiency. Um, so also by uh, embracing technology, uh, these organizations are not just streamlining their workflows, but they're also positioning themselves in uh, a response uh, to agile, uh, uh, creating agility, essentially, um, uh, to address market conditions and, and dynamics. Also um, looking at uh, another key insight uh, involving comprehensive reviewing of internal processes um, so Q accredited firms uh, are really scrutinizing every aspect of their operations. So they're asking those critical questions about well, what can they automate um, and um, how uh, the onboarding process can be made more efficient. Uh, this, uh, in, in, uh, th th this sort of approach um, to investigation uh, really ensures that it, inefficiencies are being identified and rectified uh, and it's really fostering a, a culture of continuous improvement. That's what we're doing with, with the, uh, the assessment process in, in totality. And um, also to move on uh, to uh, the, the other point here, um, uh, which is um, investing in staff. So in, in the pursuit of excellence, uh, these organizations are investing significantly in staff training and development uh, because they're recognizing the importance of technology um, in the, the current um, credit landscape. Um, so there's a, a specific focus on upskilling um, in technical and technological um, competencies. Uh, moreover, uh, attention is, is being given to such areas as customer service um, and sustainability. Um, so this investment in human cap human capital uh, ensures the workforce is not only skilled, but also motivated. Um, and what we're trying to do there and what, what the firms are trying to do um, is um, align with organisations uh, long term goals. Um, so in conclusion, uh, the strategies adopted by CICMQ accredited firms uh, really offer a roadmap for success um, in the, the, the modern uh, credit management world, um, really by aligning credit strategies uh, with broader business objectives, uh, managing costs, um, leveraging automation, um, reviewing and optimizing processes, 
um, as well as investing uh, in staff training, uh, these organisations are setting the benchmark for excellence. Uh, as we uh, navigate the challenges uh, and uh, I suppose the uh, opportunities in our own uh, professional journeys, you know, we need to sort of draw on um, inspiration from these insights uh, to eval evaluate um, our practices uh, and contribute to the, 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 the contribute to the success of these organisations. We go on to talking about uh, top tips for 2024. Uh, so again, these bits of commentary uh, are coming from our Q accredited firms. Um, <clears throat> we need to to look at these insights um, not just as of, sort of words of wisdom, but also um, sort of practical strategies that can elevate um, your credit management practices. But first and foremost, um, in the most challenging times, prioritize sustainable payment plans and propensity assessments for customer support needs to be there. Uh, and by doing so, uh, we're not just managing the immediate uh, financial landscape, but laying the groundwork for longer term sus sustainability and, and, and stability. Um, it's about understanding your customers' needs, obviously, um, but, but also creating solutions uh, that ensure their success while safeguarding your business. Um, furthermore, uh, maintaining close connections uh, with clients um, is really vital and crucial. Um, in times of economic uncertainty, which we absolutely are living in those times, unfortunately, providing uh, business-led options uh, really is key. Uh, and to anticipate any extended um, tough economic climate, um, position yourself ahead of the curve. Now, so by staying proactive and offering solutions, uh, your customers um, e even ask, uh, you can become a strategic partner uh, rather than just a, a service provider, okay? Um, and uh, just, just talking about agility, you know, keeping agile, being, being proactive, not reactive, um, look for potential roadblocks uh, before you reach them um, in a dynamic economic environment foreseeing challenges is is a powerful skill um, so by identifying potential uh, uh, blockers uh, in advance um, you can really craft uh, and preempt uh, uh, strategies uh, ensuring you, your credit management remains resilient and effective and uh, just just the, the sort of final point here about um, prioritizing adaptability um, and, and continuous learning um, really are uh, paramount uh, moving in uh, moving into this year. Uh, economic landscape is is changing rapidly. Uh, Technology is enhancing um, at pace. Uh, you know, machine learning, AI, it's all here. Uh, and customer uh, the customers' expectations are evolving. Um, so to thrive, business must prioritize adaptability. Uh, be ready to pivot when necessary um, and embrace this continuous learning. Uh, this commitment to staying informed and agile uh, with your position is really, uh, should be really be at the forefront uh, of industry trends um, just to, uh, and ensure that, uh, that you've got the strategies uh, in play um, to be effective in the face of change. So they're the top tips. We've got the download there. You can download using the QR code. QR codes have had a bit of a rough press recently, um, but I, I assure you, if you download this, it's it's all good news at the end. You'll you'll have the the guide. Um, and just just in really in conclusion, um, just want to say, uh, just re remember the remember the tips that we, we we've been discussing throughout this in summary. So really to Prioritize sustainable payment plans and customer support assessments. Uh, maintain uh, close connections with, with clients uh, by providing those proactive business-led options. Keep agile um, by anticipating challenges and prioritize adaptability and that continuous learning um, in the face of, of a rapidly evolving landscape. Um, so enjoy the guide.
Um, and I think we, we've got lots of questions, uh, Mary and Jules. 